Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a sewing vlog and I am going to be doing a quilted jacket in this video. So I have been wanting to make this quilted jacket for ages. It's already cut out. I already started a little bit of the process about four or five months ago, but it's just kind of been left on my pile of things to do. And then because I work for Friday Pattern Company, we are doing a focus on like autumn winter jackets. And I really wanted to do a focus on like quilting and like little hints and tips and things like that. So I'm gonna be making the Friday Pattern Company Ilford jacket for this quilted jacket. Um, I'm very much a beginner, so I will be doing this vlog with you guys if you are also a beginner and we're gonna hope for the best and hopefully share some hints and tips that I learn along the way. So if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and we're gonna get straight on into it. So as I already mentioned, I did start this about five months ago. And when I say start it, I've done none of the sewing yet. So I've literally just done like prep work and stuff. So I've cut everything out. So the fabric is kind of like a cheat fabric for this quilt because I bought this really gorgeous ready-made fabric and it's actually like almost just like a basic square quilt fabric which is really, really cute. I think it was from a place called Something Bazaar. I can't remember the exact um, name of the place, but I will link it down below if they've got anything else. But it was five pounds a meter, and it's a simple sort of like cotton style of fabric. And then I'm lining it with some scrap cottons that I had uh, laying around in my stash. So yeah, I'm gonna be doing the lower rectangle pockets, and I'm gonna be quilting all of it. And then I've also prepped the collar so here's the Ilford collar, and I can't remember what I did for this. I think I was just going to do one collar and then maybe bind it. I can't remember. But um, So I've safety pinned that already, and everything I've done with my pieces, I've cut all of my pieces with um, this... I think it's called a bamboo wadding. It's just like a very good quality wadding. I've not used self-adhesive um, spray, which I know a lot of quilters use, and I'm kind of regretting that I haven't got it, but I'm gonna see how I get on without it, and then if I'm struggling, then I'll purchase. So I've cut the bamboo wadding about an inch bigger than the pattern pieces. So what I've done, if I hold this out, I think this is a sleeve. I've cut that out like this, and I'll be lining it at the same time when I'm quilting. So I sandwich the bamboo wadding in between the outer and then the lining fabric and sort of quilt those together. Then once they're quilted, you lay that back on top of your pattern pieces and then cut any excess off because what happens when you quilt is it just shrinks ever so slightly. So you wanna make sure that you leave a little bit of give around your pattern pieces when you're cutting them out. It's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of quilting that I've got to do. <laughs> Um, so I'm essentially just going to get started. A couple of things to note. I'm using my regular Janome DKS for DKS 100 sewing machine, but I'm going to be using a walking foot. As well as a walking foot, a couple of other essentials that I picked up was some embroidery thread. You can use normal threads if you want to, but embroidery thread is a little bit more durable, so you're not going to get any like snapping or anything like that. And this one is the da -da -da, Metzler silk finish cotton and it's in a pink shade um, and then I've also got these crafters curve safety pins which are amazing for putting the thick layers together so the three layers of the lining the wadding and then the outer outer fabric when you're quilting it stays really flat but you don't have to worry about trying to get pins in there when they're flat these are really really handy for quilting so yeah, other than that, I picked up a few little tips on Purple Sewing Cloud's like Instagram highlight. Um, the lovely Sam over on Instagram has done like a highlight on, quil on quilting for like beginners and stuff. I've got a quilting ruler like this. This will come in handy because of the, the lines. So always good to have a quilting ruler. Things that aren't essential, but like little bonus things. I've got some binding clips, a fabric pen, um, and I have my miniature iron that I always keep on my desk for ironing seams, that's really handy. And some scissors and then all your basic sewing equipment. If I think of anything else along the way during this vlog, I'll obviously mention it. Um, but we're just going to get straight on into it. So here I am starting the quilting process and all this means is I am stitching um, through the three layers of fabric using that thread that I mentioned 
and then also a walking foot which apologies if it's dusty it is well loved do you know what i pretty much use a walking foot 90% of the time now i never really take it off it's amazing for all sewing so highly recommend getting one if you haven't already it's worth every penny um so with the quilting as you can see i did all of these like crazy lines with the fabric pen and this is a very excessive like you don't need to do this but this is like my first practice and i wanted to make sure it was like super accurate but with the next ones going forward what i'll do is i'll just do a couple of lines in terms of like the direction of where i need to quilt because i'm going against the squares where the squares aren't 100 percent straight i didn't want to do them on there and then you'd see that it wasn't straight so i'm going kind of against that and go diagonally so what i'll do is i'll do um a couple of diagonal lines on the other pieces so a couple and then i'll just use the foot as a guide in terms of like the thickness of how wide i want to do it um so yeah that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna quilt this collar as you can see i've got all the lovely safety pins in there it's nice and flat underneath and yeah we're just gonna have a lovely bit of mindful sewing and get this quilted so i will show you what it looks like when it's done so here is that collar finished actually didn't take me that long at all let's have a look time wise maybe about 20 minutes i mean if you look so closely you can tell the lines aren't 100 percent perfect but i think it looks good <laughs> I'm back in the studio about to do another sewing session. I have no makeup on, it's just one of those days today. Look how dreary and horrible and rainy it is. Well, I don't know if you can even see it in the camera, but um, it's like blowing a gale and super stormy and I'm in my studio and it's quite cozy, but also not because if I have to run to the house and it's pretty miserable, but anyway. Um, I'm continuing on with the quilting so you might have seen that little time lapse of me um, doing some pinning and everything and the quilting is coming together really nicely so we have our pockets and there's a close-up of the detail so they've turned out super nice and they're not too thick it's such a good quality wadding that I've used um, and we've got our sleeves, I think these are, yeah. Two sleeves completely quilted. A bit of bunching on one side, but that's, thankfully it's the lining side, so I'm not too worried because you won't even see that inside the sleeve. Um, and then one of the jacket pieces. And then that's it. So we are now moving on to, I think this is another side jacket, yeah. Yeah, so we've done that and I've already got my markings on there as it per the other ones I showed you. So I'm gonna make a start on that one, get that quilted, and then the only other piece left, I say only, it's the biggest piece, it's the back piece. Um, the next step is to lay our pieces, lay our pieces flat and then put the pattern piece that is, um, the you know, the corresponding pattern piece on top of it and recut it. Um, also, there might be a factor in the seam allowance on this make. I think with the Ilford it's 5 eighths and there'll, there'll be some areas where we actually need to remove that because uh, we are binding the um, edges and things like that rather than sewing. So I need to figure out, it's going to be a case of figuring out as I go and I wish I could tell you straight away what I was planning on doing but I've never done this before so I'm not entirely sure what my plan is with the seam allowance I think it might just be a case of removing a little bit from the front um, and everything else will be bound sort of once I've stitched it it will then be bound like seam allowance um, and Chelsea from Friday Pattern Company did a full um, video on how to bind uh, seams or how to like finish seams with binding so I'll link those uh, those videos and things below for you guys as well because that's kind of what I'm going to be following in terms of the finishing of this Oh my god you guys, I finally finished quilting and I literally feel like I want to collapse on the floor. <laughs> 
honestly, like, this is the last piece I've quilted, and I'm not going to show you too close up because I was starting to get lazy by the end. Oh, honestly, how many blooming lines have I had to sew? Um, so, yeah, I've got an extreme headache right now, and I'm dying for a cup of tea. But anyway, I finished. The quilting i'm so freaking happy because it took me so long so now what we need to do is recut our pattern so i'm just gonna fold this in half so we fold it in half as as normal um so i'm gonna recut the pattern guys and i will show you what it all looks like when it's done hi i look so disheveled because i've literally not stopped quilting um, so I've just been re-watching the Ilford jacket sew along tutorial where Chelsea is putting together the full jacket and I decided because ugh, stupidly um, I had quilted the collar but I'd only quilted the one side and I thought I don't know why I thought if I did the lining and that like you know basically just quilt it um, then I could just use that but then I forgot obviously seam allowance on the collar and I don't want a collar with just like bound edges um, you know like bias binded edges so what I've done is I've got another piece of this fabric and I've just cut it out cut out the collar piece interfaced it and then I'm going to sew my quilted bit to that one and the quilted collar will be on the outside so that obviously that's the bit that you'll see um, and if I wasn't being lazy I would then quilt this again but I'm not quilting it again because I can't quilt any more fabric <laughs> so I'm just going to line it as I would normally um, so obviously this one with this one um, so that's my plan so I'm just going to follow the instructions to sew the collar together and essentially just follow the instructions for the jacket sew along um and also chelsea does bind seams so i'm gonna uh, follow what chelsea does with that as well um which will be super easy so i just want to show you guys that finished edge with the bias binding really really nice so i've just done the one on the shoulder seam um just here but obviously got to do the other shoulder seam as well gonna look so nice and neat um, once both of those shoulders are done and then we're gonna do the um, the side seams as well hey friends so here's where I've got to with the jacket um, I've just sat it on my mannequin the collar isn't actually attached but all of that binding is now done on the side seam I actually quite like the green against the pink I think it's cool the inside so yeah nice little feature and then uh what's next i think putting the sleeve on is next but i could be wrong i just need to um figure it all out and come back to it because i'm done for the day made good progress though i'm pleased with this and i think just one more sewing session and i should have it finished so yeah, I hopefully won't look so dishevelled next time, um, but I think it looks super cute. My little iron is going off, it's turned off. It looks super cute though, I literally can't wait to have it finished. So yeah, I will see you in the next clip. Hey guys, so back in the studio, it's the next day and I'm aiming to finish the Ilfa jacket, which is obviously behind me, um, which is why I did this. Uh, so yeah, I just need to attach the sleeves, I believe, but I'm gonna follow along with the sew along video by Chelsea and let you know any amends I'm gonna do to the jacket as I go. Better, that's better lighting. Um, I think the most interesting part will be putting, well, the front placket, um, knowing how I'm gonna do that. Um, I think that'll be the most interesting part. Um, coming to you from behind the overlocker. So the next step is to finish, more finishing, so to save on bias tape, I'm just going to do the side seams of the sleeve with my serger here, um, slash overlocker. Um, and then I'll do the top part of the sleeve with the bias tape, because that you'll see on the, around the shoulder. But I want to just do the side seams with my overlocker. So here are the sleeves, all finished. I've got the 
top and bottom edges like bias tapes and then just the side seams overlocked with my so this is my first try on it's looking super cute i think the next process is the plackets so i need to figure out what i'm going to do i think what i might do is take the seam allowance i want to create all that bulk with that folding of that edge so what i might do is bias tape take off the seam allowance bias tape it and then it's just like a little bit smoother so i'm just sewing the bias tape on and just need to mention it wasn't five eighths um, that i needed to cut off the center front uh, plackets it was just a quarter of an inch because you turned it in quarter of an inch and then turn it back on itself to sew it in the instructions so it's literally just that quarter of an inch that you need to trim off the fronts hello so i was thinking of um doing bias tape around the pockets and just having it exposed because i thought it would make quite a nice little detail but i've run out of bias tape i've literally got that left and i wish i could tell you how much i had but i've had these in my stash for ages so i just used what i had but i think it was three meters perhaps of um each one so about six meters worth of bias tape roughly i'm just estimating though um so i can't do that so with the pocket my plan is and i don't really enjoy or like the idea of this plan but i'm gonna have to do it is to overlock all the way around the pocket and then have to iron turn it in and stitch it that way it just means that even with the walking fit on my machine it's not going to enjoy my machine isn't going to enjoy sewing around those thick edges just tried the jacket on it is a functioning jacket now it just needs pockets and buttons and it looks incredible so i think the next clip will be showing you what it looks like i'm very excited <laughs> the jacket is finally done. We're going to ignore this stain on my top. Okay? Anyways. I've got that new jacket feeling, you guys. When you finish a make that is taking you hours of work i'm literally so happy with it can you tell <laughs> um yeah i'm really pleased i have yet to wash off the blue marks so yeah they would be gone but for the benefit of finishing this video we have got the jacket i'm so happy with it you guys i love it so much i've got my pockets good little hand length does it fit my phone in it? Let's have a look. Da, 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 da. Perfect fit. It's like a nice length, sort of middle of my bottom. And then we've got my Paige Joanna Pigeon Wishes buttons, which just goes perfectly with it. Um, I did have to do the buttonholes by hand. Now I have an expensive uh, sewing machine. I have a Janome DKS 100 and I have a walking foot and uh, built in buttonholes and my machine just doesn't do well when sewing buttonholes through thick fabrics. If you guys have got any tips for me um, when sewing buttonholes on thicker fabrics let me know um, because I ended up having to sew them by hand which is not, an, not a massive problem. I absolute grief as you can imagine when I'm like so close to finishing the project. Um, but anyway, we'll stop rambling. Here's the finished jacket. A few little ending notes then in terms of the quilting process. I would say that the fabric that I brought, the fact that the squares were ready made, was a massive time saver. Um, the only issue with that is the squares didn't uh, meet up perfectly, so therefore I had to quilt everything on the diagonal just to make up for the fact that it kind of hid the squares weren't 100% straight, if that makes sense. Um, especially if it's your first quilted jacket project. This is my first quilted jacket project ever, so I'm super pleased with how it turned out. Um, another thing to note is that you don't have to mark every single line like I did on this sleeve and on the collar. I just marked a few lines and then used the guides on my sewing machine and my eye sight basically to 
do all the rest of the lines on all of the other pieces. It does mean that some of the lines are slightly wider or thinner than others, but you cannot tell, like because of how busy the fabric is, you cannot tell that the quilting differs ever so slightly by the millimeter. So that's just the perfectionist in me wanting it to be perfect. But obviously if you're sewing with a plain fabric and you're quilting a plain fabric, then obviously that attention to detail really does matter. Um, a few essentials, curved safety pins were an absolute must. Uh, a walking foot is an absolute must when quilting. I'd say the fabric pen and the quilting ruler were really, really ideal. I don't know if I would have done this project or I could have done this project quite so um, easily without those. But the wadding that I use is a premium wadding. It obviously cost me a bit more money, but it's designed to be a wearable wadding. It's not going to be um, causing me to overheat. It's like, it's really lightweight. Um, it's a really lovely textured wadding and it sews beautifully I had no issues with it no fluff on my sewing machine like it was perfect so the wadding is really good and then in future notes this is for future pages reference as well is to get some adhesive fabric spray for the layers of quilting if I'm going to be quilting anything of this size in the future then I will be using adhesive spray so again if you're a novice a beginner or even if you're watching this and you're a, you know a quilter um that's my lesson learned on this project. So yes, I think that's it. I think I've covered everything. Let me know what you think in the comments of the finished jacket. And if you're gonna be trying this out for yourself, uh, just to know, just a final little note, this is the Friday Pattern Company Ilford jacket pattern. I will leave that linked in the description box below. Um, and that's it, I think, everyone. So thank you so much for watching. If you're new to this channel and you've got all the way to the end, make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching guys, bye.